Traveling the I-70 corridor between St. Louis and Kansas City would no longer take three and a half hours, not when traveling in a pod like this. At 640 miles per hour, the trip on Virgin Hyperloop 1 would be within 30 minutes. 28 minutes is the expected travel time. And for a trip to Columbia, making it there in 15 minutes. High-speed travel through a tube travel system is not only possible, a new study says it's also safe and sustainable. That's according to the feasibility study conducted by Kansas City engineering giant Black & Veatch. Virgin Hyperloop One is developing the technology for passengers and cargo. The way it works, the Hyperloop pod vehicle would accelerate gradually by means of electric propulsion through a low pressure tube that glides above track through magnetic levitation at airline speeds. This is a glimpse how the track would appear at times along Missouri's route through the I-70 corridor connecting St. Louis, Columbia, and Kansas City. In the fall, a delegation from Missouri toured the company's test site in Nevada. Co-founder of the Missouri Hyperloop Coalition, Andrew Smith, had a chance to see the beginning stages of operation firsthand. I would all over it. I would absolutely love to be on it. I'd like to be one of the first ones on it. He describes the visit as an exciting opportunity, inspiring hopes for Missouri. What I can tell you is Virgin Hyperloop One is telling us and other regions that they want to make some decisions as early as 2019, and they want to start breaking ground as early as 2020. Virgin Hyperloop One had previously ranked the Missouri route among the top five locations in the world, if not the top three, it said, for the high-speed track. And now Missouri is the first state to complete a full feasibility report. The study highlights how the proposed public corridor is relatively straight and flat, making construction and high speeds achievable. The interstate system, started in 1956 by, by President Eisenhower, um, this is where it started, right here in the state of Missouri on Interstate 70. And if you were creating a new mode of transportation like they envision, wouldn't you want to start in the middle of the country where it all started with the interstate system? According to the CEO of Virgin Hyperloop One, we are especially proud that Missouri, with its iconic status in the history of U.S. transportation as the birthplace of the highway system, could be the keystone of a nationwide network. The resulting socioeconomic benefits will have enormous regional and national impact. The estimated cost for the Missouri project is between 30 to $40 million per mile, including the track. That can add up to $10 billion or less for a 250-mile track. Public-private partnerships are expected to fund Hyperloop projects like the one Missouri is hoping to achieve. This is not going to be funded by the state of Missouri. So Missouri taxpayers are not going to be on the hook to build a hyperloop between Kansas City and St. Louis. We're going to have to come up with other models. It's going to have to involve private money. Virgin Hyperloop One said the full study will not be released because of intellectual property issues, only releasing parts of the summary. According to the study, the cost to take a Hyperloop pod between cities would be lower than driving, cheaper than the cost of gas. And there's more savings. With less time spent on the road, Missouri Hyperloop could give time back to people worth up to $410 million per year. The Hyperloop would have up to 51,000 riders a day along the entire route, reducing interstate traffic and accidents. Reduction in accidents along I-70 could save residents up to $91 million per year. Concerning the exact location of the track along I-70, a spokesperson for Virgin Hyperloop One says alignment with the interstate lanes would vary. There are options for track configurations. Details about over, under, um, how close is it to the interstate, how does it impact adjacent uh, land uses and properties and accessibility. That's what the feasibility study of Black and Beach is supposed to dive into. Virgin Hyperloop One said the locations for portals passengers would use to board have not been determined. Also serving as Vice President of Entrepreneurship and Innovation for St. Louis Regional Chamber, Smith has a good idea what's in store for the St. Louis area. Really the best location would be Lambert Airport for a lot of reasons. You know, it's a multimodal hub. It would probably drive more traffic to the airport, which would allow them to create more flights um, out of St. Louis. But the biggest advantage of it is that, you know, it's already connected to our local light rail system. 
right? So it's relatively easy to get from a place like Lambert to downtown or from Lambert to Cortex or to Midtown or, you know, other places in the region. If Virgin Hyperloop 1 were to move forward with the Missouri project, the route infrastructure would be completed by the mid-2020s. For HEC, I'm Kathleen Berger.